In today's video, I'm going to break down how you can automate the entire life cycle of your documents, contracts, and forms, as well as all the annoying million manual tasks that come with it. Regardless of which software you're using, whether it's DocuSign, Adobe Sign, Google Docs, Pandadoc, it doesn't matter. The five steps or process design, then template setup, database setup, integration setup, and interface customization. Whether you are a total beginner and have never automated a document workflow before, or maybe you've already started, but you're really not sure if you're doing it in the right order and which steps to complete, then this is the blueprint that will help you automate all the forms and documents. And I can say this confidently because this is the exact blueprint that we at Solution Consulting have been using since 2019 to automate our clients' workflows. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Sofian Saudi and I'm the founder of Solution Consulting. We help small and medium organizations cut 95% of the time they spend on paperwork, mostly during their customer onboarding as well as new hire onboarding uh, processes. So if you're interested in uh, our help to set up exactly what I'm going to show you over the next uh, minutes, then you can book a strategy session with one of our automation consultants using the link just down below in the description of this video. Now, if you want to automate your contracts and forms, you need three main ingredients. The first ingredient is a document template. The second is the database and the third is an integration. The document template will act as the blueprint to generate the documents. Your database will store information that you need to create those documents. And you'll also need to use the integration because you need information to move between your database and your document templates, which is how you're automating the process. However, none of these ingredients matter if you don't do it in the right order. And we start with step one, which is process design. We can't skip this step because we can't really teach computers to do something we don't fully understand ourselves. So to map your current process, you can use a whiteboard, you can use pen and paper, or even a flow chart like Lucid chart. Once you've picked the document workflow that you want to automate, you'll need to identify the steps involved in the four phases of your document workflow. Each document needs to be prepared, sent, signed, and managed. So when you're mapping out your process on a flowchart, you want to represent all the steps that, that occur during those four phases. And it's very important that you don't mix up how things are currently being done, so how you're doing it now, with how you want them to be done in the future. Otherwise, you're going to be super confused because you're not going to know what is already done and what's not done yet. At a minimum, you should be able to explain who is currently doing what, using which software and in which order. For example, let's say that you want to streamline your new hire onboarding process. Your current process map would normally look a little bit like this. First, the candidate verbally accepts the offer. Then the HR creates an offer letter in Word, then uploads the letter in DocuSign, sends the letter to the, to the candidate through DocuSign, and then the candidate receives the offer, uh, signs it, HR countersigns, downloads the completed PDF, and saves the completed PDF in Google Drive folder or somewhere else. So make sure that all the documents that are involved in the process uh, are included in your process map. Because sometimes you have multiple documents. You may have an offer letter with an I-9, a W-4. It doesn't really matter. But you want to make sure that you represent all the documents involved in that workflow. Then once you're done with mapping the current process, so how you're doing things now, what you want to do is you want to look for tasks that can be automated, such as data entry, document creation, saving the document, renaming a document, placing it in a folder. And here, what you can do is you can use Google to find tools that can help you automate those processes. The most common ones, of course, DocuSign, Panadoc, Jotform, DocuPilot, Make.com, Zapier. And before you move on to the next step, you want to ensure that the software you chose to automate those steps has um, all the functionalities that you that you need to automate your contract and forms. So for example, if you're trying to build a mobile responsive forms for your new hires to complete on their phones, DocuSign has a lot of limitations when it comes to mobile responsiveness. So maybe you'll want to use JotForm for that specific purpose. Once you determine which software you'll be using to automate your workflow, you'll want to duplicate the current state flowchart, call the duplicate future state, and then you want to replace manual step by the automated steps. So your new process would normally look like this. First, the candidate still verbally accepts the offer. That doesn't change. Then the HR clicks on generate the offer somewhere in a database or a software. Then DocuSign picks up that request, creates the offer letter, sends the envelope to the candidate. The candidate uh, receives the envelope and signs it. HR does the same. And then automation downloads the signed PDF and places it in the right Google Drive 
folder. And so this is the most important step. Don't skip mapping out your future state process before you build automation. If you're tempted to procrastinate by building automation before you map out the process, you're just wasting time. Process comes first, tech comes next. Software exists to facilitate a process. It's not the other way around. Once you have a clear understanding of how your future process is going to look like, then it's time to create your template. And here you want to identify the necessary fields and placeholders needed in your contract and forms, and it doesn't matter which software you'll be using. So create a list of fields organized by document in a spreadsheet like this one. So for example, you need the full name and address of the candidate to merge in your offer letter, right? So before you create your template, add the field names in that column and specify the data type and any other important properties if that's applicable. It's quite straightforward here in this example because we're just doing a mail merge that needs to be signed. Um, and so we're only dealing with one data type, which is a text field. But if you're building a form, you will have drop down lists, radio buttons, check boxes, and maybe you'll need to have some conditional logic and rules and validation added to each field. And so if you don't write these down, you're, getting, you're going to get lost and you will not have any way to test that your forms are working. So do this for each document and form and trust me, it will save you 10 times the time you put into it. I love the saying that goes, one hour of planning saves 10 hours of doing. It's so true. Once you've identified all the fields that need to be built, go ahead and build your templates and forms, whether it's a DocuSign, DocuPilot, Panadoc, or JotForm, doesn't matter. And once you've built your templates and forms, then you can move on to the next step, which is to set up your database. And this is a part that many of our clients don't understand at first when they come to us for document automation problems. Why do they even need a database? Without a database, you can't automate your contract because to automate a document, you need information. And if that information is scattered in your emails, spreadsheets, in your head, then you won't be able to automate the process. This is why you need to decide on a centralized database where automation will be able to pull and push information from and into. And no, Excel and Google Sheets is not a scalable, suitable solution long-term for your organization. Instead, choose a cloud-based uh, database that supports formula fields. So for example, let's say that you have a first and a last name field, but somewhere in a document that you want to create, you need the full name. Using a formula field in the database, you can, you can create a concatenate function that will combine the first and last name, which will give you the full name as an output. And yes, it's exactly like in Excel Google Sheet, but it's just 10 times better for a lot of other reasons that I'm not going to get into in this video. As for this time, we personally recommend using Smart Suite or Airtable because those tools are very versatile that don't require you to know how to code and they can help you with multiple use cases in your business and are very cheap. They also allow you to build custom user interfaces. I'll explain a little bit more uh, on this later. And you'll find the link to sign up for one of those tools in the description just down below. Once you've decided which database you'll be using, you can move on to the next stage, which is configuring the database. Configuring your database means that you'll be setting up tables and fields. Table is like a spreadsheet where you organize and store related information. And a field is a column in that table. Each row in the table represents a record. If we stay on our new higher onboarding example, you'll want to create a table that will hold the applicant's information. You could call that table applicants. And within that table, you'll have applicant first name, last name, uh, email, phone number, set up as fields, right? As columns. And each row in that table will be a candidate. It will contain all the information for one candidate only. Looking at your document mapping spreadsheet, that first spreadsheet that I showed you, go ahead and set up your table and fields inside of your database. And you don't have to call the database fields the exa exactly the same as your document fields. It does not matter because you will map those fields. And that's exactly what I'm going to get into now. So what is field mapping? Think of when you're traveling by plane. The airline knows which gate you're leaving from, and let's just say it's A15 and which gate you're going to at the destination uh, airport, let's say B30. You could say that the departing and arriving gates have been mapped by the airline. With your field, it's exactly the same story. You need to know where the information is coming from and where it needs to go. And the best way to do the field mapping is by looking at that spreadsheet that you've, where you've listed all the, the, the fields in your documents and forms. In that column here, you'll, want, you'll have the list of the fields in the documents. And now your job is to map the document field to the database field. So you want to look at the database field that you've created and write the name, the exact name as it appears in the database. And if you're tempted to skip this step, you won't be able to identify discrepancies between your documents and database structure, which will make it super complicated and annoying um, for you to build the automation. 
So once you've mapped all your form fields to your database fields, you can proceed to the next step, which is building the integration that will move the data between those mapped fields. To build your integration between your different systems, you can either use a code or no code platform. At SolarSign, we build all our client solutions using make.com. But if you are a total beginner, which is a no code platform, by the way, I recommend that you go with Zapier.com because it's much more user friendly. Once you've decided which integration platform you'll be using, then you can start building your automations. An automation always has a trigger followed by actions. The trigger is the thing that needs to happen for the automation to start running. Actions are the tasks that the automation will do instead of you doing it manually. So for example, a trigger event could be a button is clicked somewhere, and then the following actions could be create a signature request in DocuSign, then the following action could be pre-fill the fields in the template, and then the other action could be to send the document for signature. Here, it really depends on the workflow you're, you're trying to build, really. And you're going to need to build multiple automations in order to automate the four stages of each document. Maybe one automation will take care of the first part, uh, the first phase, then another automation will retrieve the signed contract, and then another automation will be sending that signed contract to someone else that needs to see it. I don't know. I'm just making things up. Once you build your integrations, you'll want to test it multiple times to ensure there are no bugs. Make sure that you follow a meaningful naming convention when naming your automations so that you know what it does and without having to dig in. There is nothing more annoying than trying to understand what automations are meant to be doing when they break and everybody's waiting for the thing to happen and it doesn't happen and it's super frustrating. And last but not least, a simple user interface plays a vital role in making contract and form automation user-friendly and accessible to everybody that actually needs to use it. Without a simple interface your users can follow, it'll be very difficult for them to learn, um, it'll take time to train them, and they'll maybe end up going back to doing things manually because they can't work out how to use your tools. The benefits of using Airtable or Smart Suite as your database is that it comes with uh, the ability to create custom interfaces that only display what the user needs to see at a given point in their, in their workflow, which eliminates um, confusion from the day-to-day. And so here is an example of how the back end of Airtable looks like. So that's without the interface. And you could say that it looks like a spreadsheet. But now if you look at these pages instead, you're actually looking at the exact same data, but we've decided what users are going to see on which page, which buttons they have access to, which functionalities they can trigger, what is hidden, and it's so much better for them because they don't have to think, they just have to follow the process. So once your interface has been designed, you'll want to train a couple of users on the process and get early feedback to improve your automation and maybe your interface as well. And then you'll want to develop standard operational procedures and video trainings for these users to follow. Don't forget to update those um, setup reminders so that you know that every six months or three months, they have to be updated. And by doing all of this, you will have completed building your documentation. There's quite a bit of work involved in creating your document automation workflows, but this is what it takes. If you don't have the time to do this all by yourself, then you can book a consultation with one of our automation consultants. Our team will follow the exact same methodology I've just described in this video to design, build, and deliver your automation that will do the work for you so that you don't have to. I will see you in the next video. Ciao.